right. We are live. And this is when you start seeing like the ridiculous amount of names that come up. So I love it. And they go by so fast that I can't keep track with all of the names that are signing in. Um, so um, as always, um, thank you for dialing in and being with us today. Um, and please um, shoot us a message in the chat and let us know where you're calling in from. Um, we try to keep track of all the names that roll over really quickly, but, uh, but it always helps when you let us know. Um, Anna, all the way from Orlando, I'm in Tampa. So, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to connect at some point. We're only an hour away from each other. Um, and Casey and Matthew and Ying Lu, I talked to your boss earlier today on the phone. I hope you were doing well as, uh, uh, in addition. Look, Nick, you're already getting like shout outs from me <laughs> and Kissimmee. Uh, really glad that everyone is dialing in. We have um, such a good conversation lined up and, and we have so many people on um, coming into the call today that we're going to wait just a little bit longer for people to come on board. Um, but with Melanie from Christian Tours and Burke International Tours and, and Nick from American Tours International and Joey's back for a repeat performance from Moose Dash Tours. Uh, so we can find out how he's doing and some of the programs that he's implemented. Um, I'm really excited to, to have this conversation today. Um, as, we, uh, as we let everyone dial in here, I should say that um, as always, Betsy Cooper from Tour Operator Land has sponsored all of these um, and has really reached out and helped you know, um, talk to all of the operators to get everyone on the call. Um, so we're super excited um, that, that Betsy is still sponsoring and I thank her. She's going to put her information in the chat box. So if you haven't used Tour Operator Land um, for itinerary suggestions or, or photo opportunity downloads or been involved with them to get your attraction or, or destination signed up, um, talk to her about it because it's a really unique tool that, that our operators use on a, on a very frequent basis. Um, so we are um, going to get started. I know that Melanie's going to dial in um, so, so we can hear her as well. Um, but um, really interested in, in some of the things that are going on with, with the companies here. So I'm going to, as always, start with letting our panelists introduce themselves um, and tell us a little bit about their company um, and kind of what, what they're doing right now. So Joey, I'm going to start with you. How are you doing, yeah. my friend? Great, great. My name is Joey Spellerberg, and uh, I am owner of Moustache Joe Tours. We're a tour operator located in Fremont, Nebraska, and uh, we've been in business since 1975. Um, we mainly operate retail tours originating here in Nebraska that range from one days all the way up to 15 days. Uh, we also have cruises and overseas tours as well. And so, um, yeah, right now, uh, what we're really working on is trying to start up and come back again. Like we're all wondering, how are we going to do that? Um, you know, for, for, for me right now and my staff, we've been trying to reach out to our customers feel them out, see where they're at at this point, and uh, just stay patient and really plan next year's schedule. Um, I've been planning next year just like we would normally be doing it at this point. So um, we're, I, I'm pretty optimistic about the future. Um, you know, it's been, it's been tough on our staff. I've, I've had to make some, some changes with our staff and, and we're just kind of coasting here a couple days a week in the office until this breaks. But um, I, you know, I'm feeling the pent up demand from our customer. And I think that we as an industry, we need to be ready for the future and uh, it could really hit us all at once if we're not careful. So that's really what we're doing right now, Sherry. Love it. Love that you're getting prepared and, um, and, and I hope, um, I hope it all hits us at once. I know it will all hit us at once and I know we'll come back and I think everyone on the call is hoping that, that it comes back quickly as well. Um, Nick, let's go to you. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for having me today. Um, so I'm the Chief Operating Officer of American Tours International, uh, commonly known in the industry as ATI, and we have been in business for 43 years. Um, we're a leader in the inbound space, but I think um, uh, often uh, lesser known in the domestic space. So that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. And thank you for the 
um, ability to do that because we've really um, introduced some exciting uh, new uh, products and services for our domestic travel agent um, customers. We've been in partnership with AAA and CAA, the Canadian Automobile Association, for over 15 years as a um, preferred supplier. And over that time, we really developed our Drive America um, product, which is uh, for individuals um, that are able to book a package. And in the more recent months, uh, actually coinciding with, uh, well, a March that everyone I think in this industry will always dread this, this past March, we actually launched our Drive America um, uh, new functionality on our um, website that allows for agents to really create their own um, journey and build their own road trip for their customers. So we think that that's perfect timing to really um, broaden our, our customer base um, and also reinforce with our current domestic customer base, so with AAA affiliated agents and, and members, um, the, the value of, of building and, and booking a package road trip. Uh, so that's the, the, been the focus for, um, for 2020, as you can imagine, international inbound has taken a huge hit. Um, and uh, I, I like to agree with Joey and do believe that as soon as um, the, the restrictions are lifted, there will be a uh, swift uh, rebound. Not to say that things won't still be uh, difficult and they won't you know, bounce back immediately to 2019 numbers, but there will be uh, a rebound. There is a lot of pent up demand on the international side. But first things first, we're focusing on the uh, rebound in demand for the domestic, which you know we really feel um, because uh, the same situation that happened after 9/11, because domestic travelers aren't able to go um, internet uh, abroad and they're not able to easily travel on cruises right now, they need to pivot to the types of trips that we're all seeing um, our friends and colleagues do this summer, which are those those road trips the national parks to the you know wide open spaces of America and that's uh, where we're focused that's where ATI really specializes as well with our national parks inventory um, and so that's where our um, what our strategy is and I'm happy to speak more about it today awesome super excited about that I know um, as soon as we started promoting that it was a domestic webinar and ATI was on there everyone was like what the heck right so I'm glad <laughs> thank you for talking about drive America and we'll get we'll get back to that and circle back on how people can get involved Melanie, how are you? I'm good. Can you hear me? We absolutely can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Um, of course, Christian Tours and Burke International Tours, we're a tour operator here in the United States. We own and operate 59 motor coaches, which have been sitting since March. Uh, we do uh, student tours, and those have all canceled. Uh, we have not closed our office since, since this all began. We have furloughed people and some people are laid off. Some people work eight hours a week. Some people work 16. Some people work 32. And some people are not here. Um, I kept hoping we would have our trips going back since May, and they haven't. But we ran our first trip to Branson in July, the first week of July. Uh, what we're doing is checking to see if there's any tour we can run and make changes to the itinerary. Uh, we email our customers to ask them if the changes are good, and then if they approve, then we run the tour. Um, you talk about national parks. Um, Yellowstone won't let you come in with a motor coach, uh, so we went to Yellowstone. We hired vans to get our people into Yellowstone and then come back out and then get back on the motor coach. Um, in um, the Grand Canyon, you cannot go into the Grand Canyon. So we're changing our itinerary and going into the West Grand Canyon, the Halapai Nation. So we're doing that instead. Anything that we can do to make changes to a tour and run it, we will. We've probably run about 25 tours since uh, July. Um, in 10 days, there's a, of course, we're Christian tour company. We cater to Christian people, and we that doesn't mean that we just go to Christian places. But uh, Franklin Graham is sponsoring a prayer walk in Washington, D.C., September 25th and 26th. Uh, two weeks ago, I put out a, 
an email blast and ask if people were interested. Uh, within 10 days, we've sold 160 people. So we got four motor coaches going within 10 days. So that's amazing. Uh, so if there's attractions open any way possible, we're going. Of course, we had to cancel many, many trips to the Northeast because of um, the states not opening up. Um, but so like I said, that's what we do. We're working here to take cancellations, to take transfers. We're doing a lot of people's money on hold, uh, which they trust us. So um, we're going to stay in business. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love, um, you know, the, the name of the game has, has been pivoting, right? And kind of changing the direction of what you're doing. And, and all three of our panelists today have done an amazing job at that, you know, of focusing more on the domestic side of things or or what you were talking about, Melody, kind of pivoting and um, and and doing what your customers need. Um, the other thing I find really exciting about all three of our panelists today is the trust factor that they have with the clients that work with them is truly amazing. And that, you know, to Melanie's point, has allowed them to hold on to money and reschedule tours into 2021 um, and not provide as many refunds as, as, hap as has been happening throughout with, with other areas. Um, so on that note, how are um, bookings for this year? I know Melanie, you said you ran a tour in July. Um, you're doing, um, I see some holiday and some fall programs that, that you're attempting to run as well. And the prayer walk I think is great. Um, have you, has, you know, what, what are some of the trends, you know, we, Julie has a great question from Williamsburg on what are some of the trends that are starting to emerge right now as things are starting to open up? Well, we, we, we're running a trip to Texas, uh, leaving on Friday and we just got a call when we sent the room and list down to Lafayette and they called us back and said, their hotels are booked with linemen and people, you know, working, working there to clear up the storm. So we had to backtrack to Baton Rouge. These are things you do anyway. We would have done it whether it's through COVID or not. But then some of the attractions have closed. But we've done Branson. We've done uh, Yellowstone. We've ran uh, uh, Florida. Um, Pennsylvania, Amish country, uh, the Ark and Creation Museum, um, kind of short jaunts. We had lots of trips going into Canada. Of course, we had to cancel. Uh, but what we did before we canceled, we, we set up the dates for next year. We let them know that uh, here's the prices for next year. If you transfer your money, we'll give you the, the uh, difference. You can, you know, a lot of them save $50 by transferring their money to next year without us refunding. So we've done a lot of that also. Anything we can do that, they, that we can keep their money. <laughs> and probably about 20% probably about have uh, said, here, keep, keep my money for something else or either transferred. Yeah, and, and that speaks to, to the trust factor they have with you. And I think we all agree, and everyone on the call, that consumer sentiment and, and trusting to travel again is, is super important right now. Nick, what kind of, um, you know, uh, bookings are you seeing for 20, you know, and, and versus 21, and kind of when are they yeah. starting in 21? Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing, well, first of all, when it starts really in 20, 21, or any season for us is really April. Um, so, you know, the, the first quarter generally, this is for, for all travel, but especially for escorted is not as strong as starting in uh, the second quarter. And that's what we've seen, um, is, is a lot of the escorted, um, uh, programs, uh, passengers have, have rebooked to next year. Now those are mostly, um, international customers on the domestic side. Um, the first quarter was very strong. And then obviously things went off, um, a cliff in March when everything, um, locked down. And then what we saw was um, a, a rebound in June that then went back down in, in July. And this is for FIT. This is for um, those uh, customers that are booking hotels, attractions, individually packaging them, or booking Drive America. This isn't for escorted or for, for our group um, uh, uh, travel. So July took a hit because of the uh, increase in um, COVID spread and I think just general fear around, um, around that. Uh, and then we started to see a rebound now in this past month. 
um, which has been really good. But I think a lot of that is also um, attributed to the efforts that we've made with um, the new um, Drive America platform. And so speaking of trends in 2020, I, um, our, our feeling is, is that the summer is going to kind of, our hope is that the summer is going to kind of continue on into uh, uh, you know, late September, October, uh, and that some of those destinations that people would have only, uh, you know, gone to during the summer months, they may also uh, choose to, to visit in those months, in those fall months. Um, of course, we can't predict what will happen over the next few months. Uh, so hopefully, you know, conditions don't, don't worsen and, and create a, a similar environment um, as, as was the case in July. Um, but the outlook for 2021 is strong because, um, and I say strong, that's taking into account, of course, it's not going to, uh, I think all projections aren't that we're going to return to, to complete normalcy in 2021, but it's strong in the sense that we have a base of rebooked customers that had to cancel their trips from 2020 on the international side. And then um, the excitement that we're seeing on the domestic side from what we've um, presented into the market, we feel will continue uh, into 2021. Love that. Uh -huh. And um, I, you know, a quick question for you on, um, you also do air tours. Mm. So you have a, yeah. a private, a private yeah. side of tours as well. Um, a lot of the trends that we've been talking about with, you know, throughout these webinars has been, you know, people are looking to do more of that private type of tour. Have, have mm -hmm. you seen an increase in those or an increase in requests in those air tours? We've seen inquiries, but the, the the air tours are a seat in program for us, which means that we feed in from many different customers from all over the world and U.S. and Canada. Those are not operating this year. They are operating yeah. starting in April of next year. And that was a decision for us on the escorted side that really um, was necessary because of some of the local restrictions, you know, we can't gather together a group in a uh, in San Francisco, for example, and the air tours go through that city. So uh, operationally, it was too difficult for us to, to, to maintain some of those. Now, when it comes to a small group or family group, which probably the air tour would be maybe too expensive, I would say for most, maybe there's some out there. If there are, please, you know, hit us up. And, and we haven't seen Th that kind of request, what we've seen is more converting some of our um, our Drive America programs, the individual programs, to more of a family or group um, uh, experience, meaning that they'll book multiple rooms and drive, you know, uh, multiple cars, or they'll 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 be kind of carav caravanning on their own. That's what we've seen more of, uh, in, uh, rather than kind of taking one of our escorted programs and taking it over. But yeah. okay. you know. We'd love for that to happen. I, I think all of us would like a crystal ball to your point and to know what's opening up and, and to see lots more coming in. Um, mm. Joey, so we talked a couple of months ago. Um, you've already had some shout outs on the chat asking if you're married yet. So that's number one. Um, and, and two, I'm really curious to know you were pivoting to do some closer to home trips and you were just creating your peace of mind policy when we talked no. last time. So how has that been going for you? Yeah, uh, so after uh, April or in the middle of March when this all came out, we um, we had to you know cancel through April and then it just kept snowballing. You know how it all happened. Um, about May or June, we decided that we were gonna see, um, hope, we thought maybe this would be over by the fall. So we, we came out with a peace of mind policy or a peace of mind. Um, a lot of companies were, were trying that. We kind of went to half capacity. We said we we're going to do half capacity on the motor coach. We we're going to be very flexible with our cancellation, you know, and, and cancellation policies. And we were trying to maybe generate some demand for the fall, just thinking that maybe we would get something out of the fall. Um, obviously I don't, I don't know if that did as well as what we wanted it to do. I mean, pretty much this fall has been really tough for us. We've operated a couple of fishing trips up to Minnesota. Um, and, but we've had to cancel a lot of our, mainly our whole schedule, September, October. A lot of it was just because we had a lot of cancellations going on um, for those tours already. So even if we had folks on them, we were really low, low, low numbers. I mean, I was ready to run a tour with 26 or 20 or above, but I was thinking maybe we could have wait lists, but that just didn't happen. 
and we were dealing with 10, 15 below. You know, it just at that point we decided that there there wasn't really good for us to operate those, and the, the risk was too much anyway for a lot of the trips that we were offering. So um, uh, we're we're really now focused on um, November and December. I think you know it's great to hear Melanie doing Branson. I think. Branson's going to be something regionally that's going to be, I think, good for us coming out of, out of this. And we are planning now um, to, to run to run tours if we can. I mean, um, and so that's that's November and December and then looking into next year. You know, I know we're all kind of on edge. You know, I did hear some good news. November 1st, the CDC said, you know, states need to be required, you know, to be ready to get a vaccine out. So they're, they're optimistic, I think, that they're going to be able to have that. And I think that could really change maybe the game for end of this year into next year if that it does come out and that's successful. Um, so it's been a roller coaster, Sherry. It's been up and down. Uh, um, you know, we tried to get out ahead of it with some, some things. I think a lot of our customers were a little leery um, still. And for us, the risk reward wasn't there. And so um, for us, we're just focusing on 21. We're hoping that we can run uh, some Christmas tours in, in November and December, some shorter regional stuff that we already had already planned. Um, and now we're starting to see some activity on. Um, I would say the last couple of weeks, we've had more inquiries and bookings than we've had for uh, the last month or so, I would say. I mean, the last couple of weeks have been, have been more positive um, absolutely than the negative with with hey what are you guys doing you know we want to go somewhere so um, that that's been positive too so uh, you know a lot of what we've done from a marketing standpoint we've we've put on hold so we have uh, catalogs that we send out once a month we have marketing on social media and and newspaper I mean we've had TV advertising we've had to basically shut that down just to kind of save cash right now you know so I think for us, when I'm thinking about the future, I'm thinking about when I, when I really feel like people are ready to, to pull the trigger, we're going to be marketing like crazy and getting back out there in front of people. And we're going to be calling and we're going to really be pushing, pushing hard and say, Hey, we're open. Look, look what we're doing. And so when I'm thinking about the future, that's how I think we're going to really have to push this and come back is it's going to be a very hard push once things open up for us to really get everybody interested again and say, Hey, we're ready to go, you know, look, you know, things have opened up, you know, so that's how I'm seeing things right now. Um, and, and, you know, that could change, but I know this is not going to last forever. I mean, it's, so it's either we plan for the future or you, then you don't, you know, I don't want to have any, I don't want to have nothing in the future. And then we're right. things open up and then look what we were doing, you know, I mean, so I would just say we got to plan that things are going to come back and those that are ready for that are going to be successful. And those that are trying to catch up are going to be catching up to that. That's how I'm seeing it right now. Perfect. So I am, we've had a couple questions that have come in. So um, for everyone on the call, if you could put your questions in the Q and A, that would be great. That kind of keeps them all in one place. I've been trying to go through the chat and, and see some of the questions that have come in. And I think we've gotten all of them on the chat. Um, but if you could put them in Q&A, it makes things a lot easier for us to find them. Um, one of the questions that came in before we move off of bookings um, is, is there a month that customers, customers are booking higher in 2021 for each of you? So when you're getting those bookings coming in or inquiries, is there a month that's higher in 2021, Melanie? Um, first of all, I'm holding off on my catalog. I normally send a catalog in November, but I'm waiting till uh, probably December or having it out maybe in January. It just depends on what happens. Uh, we do a lot of sales meetings in, in January, and we do early booking discounts in January and February. So we get probably a good 30% of our yearly bookings. Uh, through February um, for the year. And then, you know, of course, we continue to sell. Um, so that's the reason we had so many bookings at the first of the year, because we had already offered the discounts and they were ready to travel. Uh, we had 
you know, we had reservations for the whole year because of that. But, um, you know, we're, we're running, I'm planning trips starting in January, February, March. We do winter specials. We go to places that give us discounts because we're there in maybe January and February uh, or early March. Uh, because the students won't be traveling in March and April this year, there should be some pretty good discounts at the hotels uh, because they're going to need some business because the students won't be there. So hopefully we'll be able to pick up on some good um, winter and spring special rates to be able to offer our customers. Because I think once this is over, and I think it's going to be pretty well over after the election, that will be, it'll be gangbusters. I don't know that we'll have enough, uh, you know, people here to answer the phone. I think I it's hope coming. So. I hope so. I hope that's the case for all of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nick, um, what, are, what about bookings for you? Is there any particular time in 21 that they're booking more or traveling more? Well, most of our bookings for 21 are rebookings from 20, right? So those, because um, it's still early for 21 for us, yeah. most of the bookings traditionally would start coming in uh, from overseas uh, now uh, in, in, in October. And then really the peak is, um, is January, February. So I hope Melanie is right and that things are uh, all uh, uh, figured out and, and starting to improve by uh, mid-November. I, I think it's probably going to take a little bit more time um, for people, uh, at least for international travel, to have confidence and have a, a, a regime really in place for, for traveling with uh, vaccinations and whatnot. I don't think that it's going to bounce back, even if things start to get better in the winter. But I, I do I do share your um, your hope, Melanie, on that. Um, for for the rebookings for 21, that would be later in the year. So there, we're not seeing we're seeing that um, for people who are wanting to take what they what was canceled and rebook to next year, they're looking at dates that are more like in June, July, uh, and beyond uh, time frame. Probably because they feel that it's more likely to be normalized by then. Right. And and what about you, Joey? Um, I know you had a lot of rebookings for 21 as well, but you know, is there is there a timing that, that people are going out more second quarter, third quarter? Um, no, I don't really see anything right now other than what we've rebooked. Um, and I kind of, uh, we're kind of like Melanie is that we do a majority of our bookings for the year early on in the year, January, February. Um, so I'm going to be really curious. That's what I, I'm really thinking what our January and February are, is going to be like. Um, you could see it go two ways. If we're still dealing with the virus and it's here and the vaccine wasn't as successful, you know, it, it's good, it could be a struggle. But if, it, if it's having a significant effect, you know, we didn't travel this year. So, I mean, you talk about all the folks that didn't travel this year and now, you know, you look at they're ready to go and there's demand, pent up demand for those people and then new people you know, it's very possible, it's a possibility you, we could see record-breaking amount of reservations come in, in in that time frame. I mean, I think that's what we're all hoping for, you know. So, you know, you gotta, we, we gotta be realistic on that. Um, and like I said before, I'm just kind of planning my schedule, you know, like, like, I, like I normally have. We've kind of added in some new, some new products, some more national parks, some more um, regional, um, but I'm still not giving up on, on a lot of some of the destinations too, that have been really good for us in the past, you know, um, cause I, nobody really knows, I mean, yet, you know, um, and I think there still might be demand for, for a little bit of everything, um, as things get back going again. So again, there is uncertainty with when, but I think when that is, um, you know, we're, we're, we need to be ready. Absolutely. So, I mean, to, to take on that point for a minute, a little bit of demand for everything. Um, we've had a couple questions come in specifically to student travel. Um, and, and Rich, thank you for the question. He, um, he's curious as to if you really think student travel is going to be out for spring altogether. Um, and, you know, is there, might there be a little bit, you know, obviously we don't know what's going to happen if things change, if things get better, student, you know, student travel might, might pick up. But, 
Um, Melanie, I'm going to have you answer that one um, from Rich. Just really curious as to the student tours that you normally do, kind of what you're hearing from them. Uh, when our student tours canceled this year, we offered um, either if they wanted to move to the following year, they could. Well, some of them moved to this fall thinking they would go. Well, all of those have canceled. And then several have moved to the spring. Well, in our area, the, the students have already been told they're not, they're not gonna be able to travel next year. So I think if, if there is any student travel, it might be five to 10% student travel based on, you know, instead of 5% of what it was it's not going to be, it'll be very minimal. Now, hopefully we own our motor coaches, of course, and uh, hopefully we'll do some transportation for some sports teams and, um, and maybe some private schools. But other than that, I don't think your public schools are going to be allowed to travel at all in the spring, maybe in the fall, but I don't think it's going to happen. Understood. Uh, well, Perfect. And, you know, and Steve, Steve had a question relating to student travel as well. And I think, I think ultimately, you know, it's, it's going to be where the schools are located. Um, and, and, you know, if, if they're allowed to have those trips then, um, moving forward in the spring and fall. Um, and I'm curious as to the perceptions of traveling to New York right now. Corey has a question um, really about that perception. Um, groups coming into New York or requests for New York, you know, or, or if they're worried about um, about COVID and recent developments in New York. Have you guys heard anything specific about that? I'll, I'll start with you, Nick. Well, I think that the conventional wisdom earlier in the summer uh, was that New York would be the last um, destination to, to rebound, but I think that that's maybe changed given um, their situation improving while others have um, have seen an increase in, in um, you know, in the numbers. So I think um, it depends whether we're talking about domestic or international audience. And it also depends on a lot of the, um, the um, lift into New York, both domestic and internationally. But right now you have um, a big push for flights to re more flights to resume and for uh, even a, a kind of bridge or, or bubble to be created with a lot of international destinations. On the domestic side, I think, um, you know, it's really about maybe the value of going to New York right now, which is tremendous. Um, there's no question that the, the, the rates that you can, can get in, uh, you know, five-star hotels now versus uh, a year ago, um, uh, uh, which means that the, you know, kind of uh, tourist class hotels are gonna be really, really affordable. I think that that will drive some demand for people who wanna go there. I'm not sure what that will look like um, over the kind of Christmas shopping period, because if things aren't open, um, because that's the obvious time period that we would see a rebound now, right? Um, but if things, uh, if shops aren't open in the way that people would, would want to, to visit um, uh, New York and experience it, I, it's not entirely clear to me. So it really depends on what happens over the next couple of months, in my view, um, what the, the local government does there in terms of allowing, um, allowing uh, openings. I, I do think that they've been more creative about restaurant uh, openings and, and dining outside. Um, so that's good, but that's not necessarily enough for, to draw people in um, uh, who want to experience the city as a whole. Got it. Um, so some other questions have come in here that really are talking about um, beyond the gateway, you know, if there's a shift that you're seeing from large cities to more smaller cities. So I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with our, are you seeing trends and travel patterns? Are, are, are customers asking for different things? So are they asking for more open outdoor? Are they asking for more rural destinations or that gateway and beyond? Um, you know, destination that maybe they don't stay in the city, they're staying outside of the city. Have you seen any any change in that, Joey, in requests coming in? Um, and you know, not not really. Um, I mean, we're kind of planning our destinations a little more, rural, but we're not. But but we're not taking out still some of those core core destinations. I mean. 
I, I seem to think it's never as bad as you think it is. And it's never as good as, it, as you know, and I, I tend to kind of go New York City is a world class destination. I don't think that changes in a year. I mean, I think, you know, the amount, you know, I think Broadway going off like it did and, and the, the and that was so unfortunate and everything that's happened there has been very unfortunate this year. But I don't think that just totally you write off New York City for tourism, you know, next year or the years after. I mean, it's still a world class destination that people want to go to for the amazing things that are there. So, um, I, you know, it could be temporary. I mean, it could be a temporary shift, but I don't think it's a permanent shift you know, unless something really goes wrong. I mean, but once you start, once Broadway starts again, once, you know, you still have the Statue of Liberty there in Ellis Island. I mean, you still have some amazing, you know, gems of, of our, of our country. Uh, I, I don't, I don't see that just disappearing in travel. And I still think we're going to have tons of demand to that destination once it comes back. So, I'm a, I'm a little, like I said, I'm a little, it's never as bad as you see it is. It probably wasn't as good. It's probably somewhere in the middle. And, you know, I'm not writing them off, you know, maybe a little bit of spring next year, but I think fall and into 2022 will be hopefully rolling again with some of those. That's my thought on it anyway. Um, Love that. I, and, and we've had some questions referring, you know, not only to big cities, but back to Orlando as well. And first I should say, Renee, thanks for that question before. Um, and um, when it comes to um, Orlando, um, same question, you know, kind of perception of booking Orlando. Um, but then the question also kind of comes down to theme parks um, and they've reduced capacities and had timing. And is that making it more difficult um, when you're talking with clients, Melanie? I'm going to start with you first. We don't have any trips that are going to theme parks right now, uh, but I've got one in November that hopefully will go. Um, you don't really know what people are thinking. And a while ago, Joey was talking about small groups. We've, you know, we've ran a lot of tours, but they've been with 16, 18, 22, 26 people. Uh, we may have had 40 people on it. And then all of a sudden, by the time it goes, you know, they're they're canceled down because, you know, I don't know what they were waiting on. They were waiting on us to say it wasn't going. But instead of them calling and canceling sometimes on us, um, we did a trip to Hershey Park and uh, told them they were going to have to wear masks. And they did. So I was surprised. I would not go to a park, really, and wear a mask. But they did. And so like you said, you never know what people are thinking. You're going to think they're going to do one thing and they'll do another. So it, put it out there, see if it'll sell. And then if it does, you're in, you're good. And if it doesn't, you back up and do something else. But I don't know where they're going to want to go. I, I think that's, that's the age that we're living in right now is, is making the accommodations as we can. And Nick, you know, a lot of the FITs coming in, you know, and working and selling the theme parks. Have you seen any change there? Well, it's more difficult for sure with the reservation process um, and some of the other terms uh, when it comes to payment and whatnot with the major theme parks. So you can read it, you know, you, you, you know who I'm talking about. So it's, it's, it is more difficult. There's no question from, uh, from a, our perspective. Um, from the consumer demand perspective, I think that that, um, you know, uh, I think it really depends on, on whether people want to be queuing. And I think that they have confidence in the, in the major uh, theme parks that they're going to, to kind of handle it um, and protect, be, be as protective as they possibly can when they're outdoors and whatnot. Um, uh, with regard to the destinations that, um, that have kind of, I guess, shifted and become more popular, I would say certainly beach destinations um, and, and wide open spaces and national park destinations is where we've really seen the, the most demand uh, over these past months, people wanting to uh, go and, and create their own, um, you know, road trip and, uh, hike and and get get outdoors and so that's really what's been um, been uh, selling um, the, these past few months. I will say Vegas also um, did rebound, um, you know, not to previous levels, but but domestic business to Vegas is doing pretty well for us, which is which is good because I think that the properties there did handle um, the the took it seriously. I know that there's been a lot of um, you know. Um, 
media reports that have been negative about, I guess, particularly like casinos, but the properties that we work have, have done a pretty tremendous job, I think, with, um, with all the measures that they've put into place. Um, so the, the customer has kind of shifted that, that is going to Vegas, the type of customer, but, um, but I think that it, it's been positive for us to see that there um, was that kind of um, um, reaction and, and willingness to, to book uh, and go to Vegas. I love that. Um, so Elaine has a great question. Um, as, as we're talking about attractions museums, um, all, all of them are changing policies, not just the big guys on, on group size and entrance and availability to come in um, based on their own local government. Um, and, and I think um, for, for Melanie, for you and Joey and, and Nick, you know, as you think about your groups and escorted tours, um, do you see um, more free time, you know, since, since attractions and museums, since everything's kind of changing and becoming a little more difficult to schedule, um, do you see creating more free time for your guests to explore on their own, something that you'll be putting into tours? And I'll come to you first, Joey. You know, we've, we've been kind of leaning that way anyway, the past couple of years, just um, trying to put more free time in. I mean, it's the thing about it is it is a, we, we operate scheduled tours. I mean, there, there's an itinerary, you know, um, that is people like that or they don't, if they like it, they're going with us. And, and, and if they appreciate the service that we offer and that's attractive to them, then that's, that's who we're, who we're, uh, those are our clients. So, you know, they, there's an element to where they want the schedule, but then, you know, we have seen a little more, they, they, they want a little, a little, a little more free time. Uh, and I don't think this is necessarily going to change that, you know, with our itineraries, you know, I, what's so hard is that every lo every location, attraction, destination, they're all, they all have different policies, procedures. I mean, you know, if you're going to do, you can't really blanket that across the board with every trip, uh, because every, every, everybody's doing it differently. So there's an element that you just got to roll with the, roll with the, the punches, you know, and roll with it, how you, how you were doing it and try to, you know, do the best job you can. Um, because there's just, there's so much out there and everybody's doing things differently. The one thing I've, I have told, I said our, to our tour directors and, our, and my staff on the road, I say, it's going to require a lot more preparation from you and a lot more on tour contact. I mean, they were already contacting hotels and everybody in advance, but you know, the, the thing that we're going to need help with is if you do have specific policies in place, trying to let us know that before we get there. Um, so we're not surprised. And, and hopefully this is just a temporary thing. I don't think anybody wants to have, you know, wear masks for all of 2021. I mean, we want this to be over with and go back to normal. So, you know, it's, I, I hope that in the mind that these policies are temporary policies. So then we, are then after this, we're back operating like we like we normally were. So, um, I don't know if that that really answers that. But I, I think you know, from me and, and my planning, you know, we're just gonna we're just taking it attraction by attraction right now and 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 going with it. So, so so to that point though, and this is this is for all of you. Um, you, you need to receive that information. You need to receive updates on what's going on, you know, from, from the attractions or hotels that you're visiting. Um, how is the best way to, to get that to you? Um, is it, I mean, that's, that's a ton of emails that you guys would be getting 24-7, um, but is, is that the best way to, to update you on, on things that are happening in the area? If, you, if you've got it already booked, you know, if you got an attraction booked, then if they're changing the ways that they're going to allow you come in, if they're only letting 15 go through at a time uh, instead of 30 or 40, you know, they've got to let us know that ahead of time, um, you know, so that while that 15's going through, what's the other, you know, 30 some people doing? So, you know, but we're on a schedule also. We don't have two hours extra here to, so you can only do six people through it at a time to, to see a place. We've got to be on a schedule. We can change it a bit, but you just don't have the time. So we have to know that in advance. One thing that hotels have to let us know in advance, which we've had a problem with, is who's offering breakfast? What are you offering for breakfast? Are you going to have coffee? 
some some do a bag, some some do a great breakfast, some do nothing. Uh, there's a lot of excuses out there now for places just because it's COVID uh, that I think they're taking advantage instead of trying to do the job that they need to do when your group comes. They're saying, oh, we've got COVID, we're, we've got restrictions, and they're not doing what they need to do. Of course, every state's different. You know, our state um, is, is open. Matter of fact, the beaches and, you know, people are flocking to the beaches. And um, but they need to do the best they can with your group when your group arrives. And I'm like, Joey, hopefully this is all over, you know, next year and we don't have to deal with these, you know, 10 people going through at a time instead of 30 or 40. So uh, it's but they need to let us know if we've got it booked. They need to let us know instead of us calling them. Absolutely. Um, so curious, you know, um, a lot of a lot of new product out there you know tours that you've rescheduled from 20 to 21 are you looking for new product um you know is is there an opportunity to add some new product if you if you've rescheduled 20 um tours to 21 um do you need additional hotel space um so i'm gonna i'm gonna start with you nick because you have drive america and everyone's curious about that so you know are you looking for are you looking for new product out there yes um, so long as it's easy to load and there's not a lot of blackout dates and, and rate changes and all the things that uh, <laughs> need to be reevaluated uh, after uh, we've gone through this. Um, you know, this is, uh, we're certainly interested in new product. We've seen some of the product that we added um, in recent years be uh, some of the best selling, you know, the kinds of uh, glamping tents in, in Moab and um, other national park areas selling really well um, and so we, we, we would like more uh, of that kind of, of product um, um, uh, and on the attraction side if there's you know um, hiking and, and biking outdoor type of, um, of experiences we're, we're also um, looking at ramping that up but of course you know being realistic we are all resource um, challenged we have to be uh, you know evaluating what makes sense to load uh, into our system, and um, and so we would ask, um, you know, that uh, in working with um, potential suppliers, that they understand that and, and um, would would you know make it as streamlined as possible, and we'll try and do the same. But yes, I think it's going to be really important to to, to as you said earlier, um, you know, pivot the product. Um, and when it comes to um, Drive America, the the concept is really, you know, working from a preset itinerary that we work with the destinations on that we're creating um, a, a kind of curated inspired um, road trip, if you will, that uh, may or may not include experiences, attractions, whatnot. But the, the agent uh, advisor, travel professional can insert those into the package, can, can, can put them into um, that, that itinerary. And that's where if we have more uh, unique experiences um, that, that can be included in that kind of, of trip, that would be ideal. And that, that is what we're seeking. Yeah. Love that. What about you, Joey? Are you looking for any new product for next year? Um, yeah, I mean, we're, I'm always trying to find, trying to find that, um, it's constant. Um, you know, I, I still, I still, I still kind of believe though, that the main the main attractions, the main hooks, the main destinations that have sold are, didn't just go away through this. You know, I say the Ark Encounter is still the Ark Encounter. You know, Washington, D.C. is still Washington, D.C. I mean, the, you, you know, the main product is still, is still there. It didn't just vanish away. So as, yes, I'm looking for new things to do, I also know once this comes back, those things are still going to be attractive to a lot of our clients, a lot of what we sold before. So, you know, I just not tearing up my whole schedule and saying, forget it, let's start over. I mean, you know, I, we've worked really hard over the past, you know, gosh, eight, nine years to refine our schedule. And, and we're doing that all the time. And we're always looking through new things. And and I would say at the end of 19, um, we were seeing maybe a little more cultural things. You know, we went down to Waco for a bunch of groups and had a little shopping tour. You know, Hamilton was playing in some, you know, theaters that tended to be a, 
So we were kind of seeing a shift to more cultural like phenomenons, you could say, you know, there's really not much of that going on right now. I mean, because no one's really doing anything. So I feel like I'm just going to have to go back to what is tried and true and you put it out there and, you know, we don't, you know, it's hard to tell what the customer wants right now until they tell you what they want. And, you know, a lot of folks have moved to next year, but until we really see a lot of booking activity again, it's hard to pivot because what do you know what, what, unless you're asking and unless, you know, the decisions made when they put the money down, right? You know, everybody, anybody can tell you what they want to do until they say, Hey, let's do it. Right. So, until we have tons of data after the, after this COVID on what that is, you know, we just got to go with what, what we've been doing. Um, so uh, that's, that's my attitude on it. You know, I, I know that rural areas might be more attractive. You know, that's what we're, maybe some people are saying, you know, we're going to throw some of that out there. You know, I would say if, if you're a rural DMO or hotelier or, you know, you know, look at your, your operators around your area and, you know, put an itinerary together and say, hey, if your clients are looking for a more rural experience post COVID, here's my hotel and here's a sample itinerary. You know, um, you still gotta have a hook. You still gotta have why we're coming, you know, but I think I would probably be more apt to looking at that now than I would maybe last year. So that gives you an idea of maybe my mindset sure. coming out of this. Yeah. Um, and that that's really a really really good advice. Richard um, had a had a question really about um, if the vaccine didn't come into play in three to four months, you know, would you be shifting sales and marketing operations to urban or rural or um, heritage or historical sites? And I think that kind of answered that question for him. That yes, you're thinking about it, and yes, you're going to need some product for it. Um, and Melanie, what about product for you? I mean, I know you have your tried and true tours as well, but are you looking for anything new and different? Um, sure, it, but like Joy says, it's got to have a hook to it. You've got to have a reason to come. It's got to be something special. I don't know if it's an event or a festival or a brand new attraction that everybody wants to see. Uh, and a lot of them, depending on where they're at, they've got to be on the way to California or, or the Ozark Mountains or New York. You know, you don't just, some, some things you don't just throw in a trip to go see that. It's got to be on the way uh, to where you're headed. And, and you've got to want to make the side trip and stop there, add a day to a trip to see it. So um, those are things sometimes you don't make a decision in that year, it's going to take a year or two to say, hey, I'll change this itinerary. I'll put this in. So um, you can't you can't make a quick change unless it's something very popular that's like, you know, you put it out and everybody wants to go see, like a Broadway play or a show or a special event. But normally you just don't add an attraction on a trip and everybody's ready to go right then. Right. Um, so we haven't even talked about, like, cleanliness and safety and all of that kind of stuff yet. And we do have a question from Irene and Irene, thank you for this. I hope you're doing well. Um, really, um, it's specific to, you know, how are you handling the safe and clean, you know, for, for Joey and Melanie specific to, to coaches, you know, and kind of what you're doing there, Joey, you touched on it a minute and with Nick, you know, kind of what new programs, new safe and clean programs have come out during this time for how you're working with, with not only groups, but also your FITs coming in. Um, so I'm gonna start with you, Nick, so we can, we can start there. Thank you, yeah. Um, well, first we, uh, I think, saw pretty early on that we would need to be informing our clients, uh, including agents that are using our, um, our website, of what all of the rules and regulations are at a state local, um, uh, federal level, because they were changing so, so much. And that was a big task for our team to gather um, from the various, um, you know, sources out there, direct sources, and really compile and update um, those, those rules, regulations uh, for, for travel to uh, the given states and, and locales. We can't cover uh, everything. We do cover all 50 states, but every single, um, you know, city we have to basically rank uh, top destinations for us. And so that is on our agent portal online, and that's updated weekly. 
Um, and then it's really a question of, of knowing what the, our suppliers are doing and them informing us. Uh, a lot of the, um, the, the major chains have been very proactive, I would say, about, um, about the kind of um, rules and new uh, measures that they've put into place. As I said, some of the really large hotels in Vegas have also been very proactive. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of individual um, properties have also been very proactive. They've had to be, right? Um, uh, but that is harder to, I guess, uh, gauge for, for us on a, each property um, basis level. But they do inform us through our um, um, product team. And then we are, um, are posting uh, that as well on our agent portal. So that's, the, that's what we've what we've uh, done on an FIT basis. On a group basis, basis it's a, a little bit um, more difficult. As I said before, we're not operating our escorted tours right now. So we're really kind of, we, we, we put into place um, uh, provisional measures, I would say, as to what um, uh, the operation will look like and what the requirements are. Um, but that's going to be developing leading up to when we actually do decide to start operating those again. Perfect, thank you. And, and Melanie, what about what about safe and clean for you? And I'm also going to throw in there. Um, we have a question about group dining, and what does you know group dining look like for you right now when you're running tours, um, and and as far as safe and clean goes when you're running them. Uh, we've we've also put out measures about our cleanliness. Of course, we own the motor coaches, so they they get an extra. You know they go out extra clean. We bought one of those uh, sprayers that that disinfects your motor coach, and of course that's what we tell our people. Whenever we're traveling, we've put the um, um, disinfectant on the motor coach. Whenever they get on and get off, we've got our tour directors there spraying their hands, uh, doing a little bit extra so that they feel confident that 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 we're clean while they're off our drivers wipes down all the coaches again to make sure that 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 it's clean so we do everything possible when you get to the hotels you just got to depend on them to make sure that they've done their part um what, their hotels are different as far as the breakfast are concerned some have buffet some don't have buffet if you have a buffet um they've been giving you gloves to go to the buffet that's happened. Um, our, some of them will do a plated meal now instead of doing a buffet. It just depends on where you're going. Uh, it's what it's what they will do. But our people are pleased because I think they see that every attraction and every restaurant and every hotel that we go to, everybody's trying to do the best they can. So uh, as long as they see the people there uh, with masks on, doing uh, precautions with gloves and and really doing their best. We have not had any complaints at all about uh, people worrying if they were going to get sick. And thank God they haven't. They haven't gotten, we haven't had anyone to get sick. That's another thing we had to do with a mitigation plan to even get into the national parks. You have to come up with all the with what you're going to do in case of any situation. So we had to provide that to some of the national parks to to even be able to come in. Goodness, well, I am I, I share I share your your happiness that everyone has been happy and and well when they've been going out on tours. Um, and Joey, you know, we talked a little bit about your peace of mind policy and your cleanliness policy, but has group dining changed for you at all on the tours? Um, we, we're probably going to go to less buffets, you know, probably, you know, in the future. Um, and I, that's probably just a perception thing going in the future, you know, even if it, even if there's no virus anymore, you know, it still probably will be in their mind a little bit. That's how I see. Uh, but other than that, no, um, you know, like Melanie said about the breakfast, you know, you just have to be, you know, the two trips we've had, we just have to be mindful of that. And, and um, you know, uh, hopefully this is, these, these, this is temporary and we can get back to, to being, you know, how, thing, how, things, how things were when there's no, when there's no virus here. So, um, no, from a safe and clean, our motor coach company does a great job. And we've definitely, you know, with half capacity, um, did the best we could with that and 
And the one thing I worry about is what happens if someone gets sick while on a tour right now and has it. And, um, you know, we've had a new waiver that we've put out, but that's the one thing that probably keeps me up at night operating again until this is over is how are we going to handle someone that has this while they're on the tour. Um, so, um, that's going to have to be something that is going to be resolved after this, that there's a clear, clear way moving forward. Um, and I think the clear way is there's no virus here anymore or you have a vaccine. So, um, that would be great. Uh, so I knew, I knew this was going to happen. I promised you an hour. We've already hit an hour. We have five more questions that haven't been answered yet. And I apologize for that. Um, we will get these questions answered. Um, our panelists have been nice enough that they'll help us with that and we'll get them emailed out to you. We'll answer all the questions we didn't get to. Um, so in the, in knowing that it's two o'clock already, I'm going to, I'm going to start wrapping up and ask for final thoughts. Any, any words of wisdom that you can share with, with all of our attendees on the call, Nick? Um, words of wisdom. Well, I think uh, I think we've all learned um, a tremendous amount over these, you know, past six months. And I think that as an industry, um, we're really being challenged right now. But we also are used to these kinds of challenges, right? We've been through this before, through 9/11, through economic crises, and um, and and uh, and so I think we are well positioned um, to to not only recover, but but um, but really. Um, rebound and thrive coming out of this, but we all have to, to I think, be creative and th uh, and see where the the new trends will um, will emerge, and that's what we've tried to do. We had already, um, you know, developed the, the the Drive America program and the platform becoming more um, flexible was really fortuitous in terms of the timing for us. So we're really um, happy about that. And if the if the um, attendees are interested, we're doing a webinar with Travel Mole and. Um, that will actually showcase the, um, the flexibility of the platform. So if they'd like to join and see what we uh, offer, both in terms of the, the flexibility of the product, but also how destinations can partner with us to feature um, the, the tours, we'd be happy for them to join. And I can send out that information after this. Oh, that's great. And we can include it in our key takeaways as well. So I'll okay, get that perfect. for you Thank you, on our information. Thank you. Um, what about you, Joey? Any, any last thoughts or words of wisdom for people out there? Yeah, you know, we've all had uh, ups and downs throughout this. You know, I, I've only, I've been eight years in this business, so I haven't, you know, had the the nine eleven. Our family went through nine eleven here, you know, in the business. But um, you know, out of all the times we've had, there's no doubt this has been the most challenging for us. Um, but um, you know, I always just try to persevere. And 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 there's days where you're like, you know, it's it's tough to find motivation some days, you know, because we don't we're not doing what we love to do, and that's serve our people and create great memories for them. And when you know, uh, but I uh, every day I just say, you know what, this is going to come back. This is temporary. I think that's what we all have to think. This is temporary. This is one one time frame, and be ready for when this does come back and, and, and to stay positive and um, to keep working and keep at it. I think that's probably the hardest thing for me right during this was just to keep at it, keep, you know, and keep trust in the process. So keep trusting your process, whatever you're at, whatever you're doing, no travel's not going away, group travel's not going away and, and better times are ahead and let's be ready for that. So I don't know if that's very wise, Sherry, but that's just, that's all I got. But it's to hopeful, and I like that too. That's awesome. <laughs> and Melanie, what what about you? Any last thoughts for everyone? Um, travel's going to come back. It's already coming back. People want to go. Uh, so open up your attractions. Open up your hotels. Be there when we're there. Do the best job you can. Thank our customers for coming. Uh, appreciate people. Be good to people, and they'll 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 be good to you. So uh, it'll get better. It'll get better. It'll change. So be Absolutely. ready. Absolutely, it will. And I I appreciate all three of you for giving up some time today. I've kept you over, and I promised you I wouldn't. So I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, time time is important right now, and and you spending it with us means a lot. Um, so thank you for that. 
Um, and to everyone that continues to tune in, we're gonna keep having conversations like this. We're gonna get through this together. Um, and I appreciate you continuing to call in to listen to our fabulous panelists. Um, Melanie and Nick and Joey, thank you again. Joey, we're watching election day, November 3rd for you. We're all gonna keep our eyes on that race. So good luck, my friend. I hope it goes in your favor. Thank you. Um, and next week, um, we're going to shift just a little bit and we're gonna be talking with hotel beds. Um, so everything from sourcing managers across the country to beyond the bed, um, marketing and also their sales team. So look for the information for that. Um, and I appreciate your time today and we'll talk to everyone soon. Have a great weekend. Okay, Bye everyone. Bye-bye.